Hello and welcome to Saguaro Spotlight. My name is Katie Roxanne and we're here today with Ed Phillips. Mm. Ed is a consultant and coach for media, communications, and business. Ed, thank you for joining us. Thank you. It's good to be here. It's great to have you here. <laughs> so you know, at my age, it's good to be anywhere. <laughs> but that's another story. So first question, right off the bat, um, what are some tips for success? Well, um, goals are good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I, I found that as I coach people, that, that some people have never really sat down and put together a goal set. Hmm. And you can have short term, like I want to do it yet this year or this month. Right. You can have medium term, then you can have long term. And the long term might be a career or um, you know, a big life event. Right. The medium might be, I want to be at a certain point in my job or earnings. And then a short term could be something as simple, I've got to change this habit, hmm. I've got to fix this bad thing that I'm doing. Right. That, that's, that's one I think goals are very important. Another thing that is, is so important is, is when you're getting into the business, whether it's film or anything else and you're in college, I, I tell my students, mm -hmm. I say, use the facilities that right. you're at to learn everything you can about everything you mm -hmm. can. And by that I mean, uh, I, I tell people, it's, you learn everything you can about film. Do you know how to edit? Yes, I learned how to edit. Right. Do you know how <laughs> to run audio? Yes, I learned. How, do you know how to light? Yes, I learned that. Mm -hmm. And that way you're so much more employable. Even right. though it may not be that long goal list job, oh, it's a good like, place yeah. to get in. Well, right, of course. And I mean, why would you not yeah. use the opportunities that you have right. at your fingertips? And so. then the internships, when they come along, they say, mm -hmm. have you ever edited? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you ever run audio? Sure. Mm -hmm. Have you ever done this? Have you ever done that? Right. And the more yeses you can give, the closer you're going to be to, to them saying, yeah, yes, like, you've got the internship, work for us, yeah. you've got the, <laughs> the, the job, and then that's how you get your foot in the door. Gotcha. And then later on, you can knock down the door. Gotcha. Okay. So, and then we were talking earlier, and your degree that you actually had is in meteorology. Oh, were you supposed to share that? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe yeah. it wasn't. But, yeah. um, yes. but so how, how did you go from uh, having that major to working in media and uh, entertainment. It, 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 was a, it, was, it was an accident. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, it really was an accident. I was so focused on weather. I mean, I, I wanted to be a meteorologist from hmm. the time I was in like fifth grade. So I was, the, I was the geeky guy that went to the counselor <laughs> in high school and said, I need to take all the math and all the science that I can get because I'm going to become a meteorologist. And they, they just looked at me They're like, like okay. okay. That's a weird goal, but sure. sure. <laughs> guy. Yeah, fine. And so as after I got my degree, I, I found out when I was in college um, that we didn't we didn't have a college radio station. Mm -hmm. But as I was learning about forecasting, there was a another university in town. We went, my school was very small; it was only 900, okay. oh, wow. and it was a part of St. Louis University. Mm -hmm. Well, Washington University had a big radio station, <laughs> and our meteorology professor had offered for us students to be interns. Oh, that's cool! And do the weather <laughs> on their radio station. Uh -huh. Well, I sure I would love to talk, you know, as you can probably tell. <laughs> and, and I said, sure, I'll do that. And we did that, and mm -hmm. that's how we got our feet wet. So lo and behold, the first job I got, I had an internship. I'm back to that, mm -hmm. and uh, ended up getting uh, the job offer full time at a private weather forecasting oh, firm. Cool. Okay. But the interesting thing is, the job that I was given about half of it was doing radio broadcasts <laughs> for radio stations scattered throughout the middle part of the country. Oh, so it's yeah. like, oh, wait a minute, let me get this straight. You get to write down a couple of little notes here, you get to talk, <laughs> and they still pay you? It's right. like, I'm in. Yeah, definitely. So that's how I got started, okay. and then uh, I got sick of that in a few years because it was, <laughs> well, I was in St. Louis, I mean, you know, that's pretty easy to get sick of. <laughs> yeah. And I moved to Arizona cold turkey, I knew two okay. people, oh, wow. starved yeah. for a year, Okay. and then a, a guy came into the place I was working and had a real deep voice. So the could always use that. And I was yeah. like, wow, you must work in radio. I was real perceptive <laughs> then. And he, he, I, I said, uh, you must work in radio. And he said, well, as a matter of fact, I do. And I said, well, I'm a meteorologist. And I'm looking for a job in, in radio. And he mm -hmm. said, well, our sister station happened to have a meteorologist that died. Oh, wow. And I said, okay. well, there's opportunity there. <laughs> there is. So, as bad as it may be. So I, I met with the news director and he said, you sure you're a meteorologist? And I said, yeah, I know I don't look like one, but I am. <laughs> and That's so I, I was hired at, at a station called KOY mm -hmm. and I was, work, was working there after a year or two. And one day this big burly guy walks in and he was talking with my boss and he kind of gave me the once over and kind of looked me over and it's like, what are you looking at? <laughs> and then he said, you ever been on TV? And I said, no. no. He said, you want to be? And I said, 
Sure. sure. Yeah. That's exactly Why what not? I said. I mean, and that's how I got hired at Channel 12. Well, awesome. they admit it was a very torturous route, but I, it, I got there anyway. <laughs> so, yeah. So that's how I ended up doing that. Well, that's cool. I mean, so, and you've had a lot of experience both in radio and television. Mm -hmm. And so how have you seen those industries change as technology has advanced and yeah. it, sort of just I, grown? It, it, it astonishes me. And I, the changes are... I call them tectonic. Mm -hmm. They, they mm -hmm. just have shifted Good. so much <laughs> over the years. I mean, nobody uh, years ago would think of having having their own film equipment right. or even the early video cameras. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just couldn't afford them. I mean, mm -hmm. There were tubes inside of those cameras that were $2,000. Wow, yeah. Which is like, what, six million now, I know. I, yeah, a lot of money. Yeah. And now the price of admission to get involved and get into video and mm -hmm. audio is even cheaper right I, the price of admission is so low hmm. that now for you guys it's going to make mean a lot more competition right there's going to be a lot <laughs> of people out there with skills yeah but to get some skills is much much easier mm -hmm. i mean you had to work at a radio or tv station or pretty much that was it right or film no that makes sense and i mean i i think about um one of the sundance films that just happened was shot on one of these, sure. on, you know, and it and it won a bunch of awards. And yeah. it's like I got a dirty little secret for you. You want to hear it? Sure. Yeah. So my son, who is is a geek, he's he's majoring in computer science, so he's that geeky. That's awesome, though. He's he, gonna have uh, jobs constantly. Yeah, about <laughs> five years ago, he got a flip cam. Okay. Now you know what a flip cam is. Yes. They store about a, an hour of HD video. Mm -hmm. You can't zoom. You can't do anything with right. it. It it's just, just sits a, there. Yeah. Right. Well, he has he has now put up about 500 YouTube videos, and I'll tell you what they are in a second. <laughs> and he has. I think he's up to 5.8 million views. Wow. With a, everyone was with his flip cam. Right. Until his phone camera got better and he started using that. Right, yeah. And he is, like I was a weather nut, he's an elevator nut. I can't explain it. <laughs> okay. I'm just telling you he's an elevator nut. So he'll, I almost said film, excuse me. He, he'll video yeah. uh, an elevator, the, the buttons and what brand it is and How all that stuff. Interesting. And, no, it's not interesting. It's, not, it's, it's boring. Just odd. But, <laughs> but, it's just but odd. somehow there are enough people in this world of ours <laughs> that find that. <laughs> <laughs> to find it interesting. So, uh, so well, that's hey, the dirty little secret. I mean, whatever so. gets you views, you there know. You go. Whatever. So you know, if you have it, a market. Why I not guess the message there it? is, is as much as you love the craft of film, mm -hmm. it ain't all about the art. No. Some of it is about if you have a niche mm -hmm. audience, yeah, they'll go there. Well, right. It's I amazing. Mean, so, in your line of work. What are the best clients and what are the worst clients? <laughs> <laughs> I won't mention any names. Okay, I promise yeah, no, you. don't don't mention it, names. It's it's interesting because there are so many people can use co coaching and mentoring. They mm -hmm. really can, and they some have to be convinced that there are other people that have ideas that can help them. Mm -hmm. And if you can't get to the point to where you realize that you you you've reached a certain place and you you want to go farther and you may be stuck, that's right. when a really a coach or a mentor can come in and help a lot. Mm -hmm. What I find though, the, the people that have reached that point and they have that aha moment and they, 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 they realize that there's somebody out there that has a skill set that can help them, right. those are the best clients. I mean, they, yeah. they, they're engaged, they're involved. Uh, they, if you say the word, you know, there's gonna be some homework. And by homework, I mean doing things without me being around. Right, um, on their own. I have a client that is in his early 70s, mm -hmm. and he's starting a new business, and I'm oh, helping wow. him put that together yeah. from scratch. He was in corporate America his whole life, mm -hmm. and he's a, a, a gifted person in, in a certain area of, of mechanics, mm -hmm. and he's wrapping a business around that, and I'm helping him put How that cool. together. And he's such a good client, yeah. and he's smart and engaged, mm -hmm. and he wants to learn, yeah. and it, he's, he's perfect. I, I have found other people that, that they, they come from a... They come from just not having anything mm -hmm. and not realizing that you have to invest in yourself. Right. No, you have sense. to. My, my grandfather, who had a sixth grade education, <laughs> said, you have, he said, son, you have to spend money to make money. Right. And, and it's really true. It's true. Yeah. And the most important thing is to invest in yourself. Mm -hmm. And if, if you're a know-it-all, mm -hmm. you can't be helped. You right. already know it all. Well, because, yeah, you're not accepting that. Right. Someone might know better than you, and, you know. Or you know, I've had a, a client that, that that went off the rails in that mm -hmm. he he had so little idea. We talked about goals yeah. earlier. He had so little idea of what his goals were, huh. and I, I just couldn't like pin him down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we need to 
Determine Actually, those even things. if it's wrong, you can then say, well, that shouldn't have been the goal. Right. I'm going to have another goal. Determine something first and then work from Absolutely. there. Absolutely. And, and so those are clients that are, that are, are much mm -hmm. more difficult to work with. Huh. Interestingly, I have found that, that, that women in general mm -hmm. are very good clients mm -hmm. because they are uh, truth seekers and they are learning seekers, mm -hmm. whereas men, uh, sorry guys, I mean, we, we kind of know it all, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I got it, I got you, you know. And that's not true most of the time. Right. We can all use coaching. When mm -hmm. I look back through my life, I probably had four or five mentors and coaches. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them I mentioned, my grandfather, yeah. uh, and another gentleman who was uh, coaching me in meteorology in my early years. <laughs> uh, another one was when I had had a uh, stinging failure in business, <laughs> and I met with him and hired him to be my coach, right. and then he became my mentor, and then we ended up working together. Right, well that's awesome. I mean, I think that's probably, that's like the best scenario, is yeah. you learn from someone and then you team up. Absolutely. And, I mean, create awesome things. Yeah, so. there's, there's, you know, there's no I in team, and that's one of the things that I've done with my business recently, is partnered with other people mm -hmm. to create a, a, a synergy there to where you can help people even more because you know you have a skill set they have a skill set right. and it, it intersects the ground, yeah. but there's also areas where you don't you don't know anything right. about and they don't know anything about but, but together you merge. got a lot more covered yeah definitely yeah well cool so um are there any other pieces of advice or thoughts that you would like to add before we sign off yes keep learning until the day you die Awesome. And keep slugging. Yeah. Um, I call it slugging rats and bailing water. <laughs> you, you know, you gotta keep at it. Some people will uh, be on something for five minutes mm -hmm. and then give it up. But if, if you have a strong goal set, mm -hmm. if you decide on a strategy and then figure out the tactics to execute that strategy, mm -hmm. pretty much whatever you wanna do, you can do. Yeah. But you do then at that point have to stick with it. Right. And when you do that and you gather all of that information mm -hmm. and those skills, you're going to be successful, especially mm -hmm. if you have the passion. Yeah, the passions and the energy. That's the key. But yeah, I mean, the the thirst and the the want to keep learning is also key Absolutely. because I don't know. I always say, if I'm not learning something, if I'm not challenging myself, then what am I doing? <laughs> like, well, you're dying. You know, you're right? Dying, exactly. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's, I'm bored. Like, yeah, you yeah, know. But exactly. that's awesome. Well, thank yeah. you so much for joining us today. It's a pleasure. Uh, this has been another episode of Saguaro Spotlight, and we'll see you next time.